Hey y'all, this is Matt with Fisherman Crossing. Got some time at the vise this week, so I wanted to walk you through a very simple jig build. This will be in trout and panfish sizes, but you can scale this up for bass if you're looking for something to use in a finesse presentation as well. So thanks for watching, stick around. So this is introductory tackle craft. If you're curious about rolling your own, this will give you a taste of it without a huge investment. Today I'll be tying on my Griffin Odyssey Spider Vise. This isn't a high-end vise, but there are certainly cheaper ones out there. And for this build, those will work fine too. Uh, aside from the vise, you're gonna need a bobbin, some scissors, and something called a bodkin can be helpful. If you pick up one of those standard tying kits from the big box fishing stores, uh, all these things should be in there. They're about 40 bucks, but you can pick up a cheap vise by itself for around 18 to 20. So for materials, you'll want some thread along with marabou feathers in black, brown, or olive, and a bottle of brownish nail polish. Today I'll be tying on 1 64th ounce jig heads. That's a good size for blue line streams or fishing below a float, but 1 16th and 1 8th ounce are a good all around size as well. Uh, everything we'll show you today is scalable to whatever size you can pick up at your local tackle shop. So we're going to go ahead and put one in our vise here and start by laying down a simple paint job. This isn't the best coating for jig heads, but the name of the game here is simple and cheap. So this is Sally Hansen's and the color is called Central Bark. It's versatile and works well for the colors of marabou that we'll be using today. I'm going to start by putting a very liberal amount of paint on here. It's pretty straightforward. You just want to coat the lead. Then you can go back and squeegee excess paint off of your brush into the neck of the bottle, kind of dry out your bristles. Come back and use that brush to take off any excess paint that's on your jig head. So I'm swapping this one we just painted out of the vise for one I did earlier that's already dry, but it really doesn't take too long for this paint to set up in the first place. For tying, I like the Ultra Thread in brown olive. Not just olive, not brown. Brown olive is going to give you a lot of versatility. This is 70 denier, but when you're starting out, look for a 140. Uh, this color does really well with all three of the marabous we'll be using and 140 is more durable as you figure out how much tension you can put on this. Uh, for this video, I'm actually gonna use a white, heavier thread. This came from Walmart. It's an upholstery thread and it's pretty stout. I'm doing this for contrast and so that you'll be able to see why thread color may not really matter for what we're doing in this video. Now with scissors, you generally get what you pay for, but with a thick thread like this, you'd be fine with something like Westcott's from Walmart. They're just a couple of bucks but they're also going to let me show you the downside of not using a fine point scissor. But uh, taking one feather out of my little hank of strung marabou here, this is the simplest way, but the most efficient way is to pull the feather tendrils directly from the stem and bunch those together. But this being a basic tutorial, just use the tip of the feather here. I'm going to use one jig length worth of this feather. Now, when you put your first wrap on this, it's important to hold your material still with your offhand and make a loose loop. Then tighten down after you've made a complete revolution. Don't try to keep that thread super tight up against the jig collar as you go uh, because it's gonna pull your material around without your control. You wanna move the material around, but you do wanna be able to control that. So after you've got that one full wrap, adjust your material so that you're only pulling in the direction of the thread. Uh, if you pull perpendicular, you risk messing up your dimensions on the feather lengths. But you know, even if your marabou only ends up on one side of the jig, don't beat yourself up. This is a process that you learn by doing. Still take it out and fish it. You may be surprised at how fish aren't nearly as particular about this as humans are. So here's the downside to using a very cheap pair of scissors with broad blades. You're not going to get very close up on the feathers as you cut them. Having said that, it may not be the worst thing in the world because you can use that extra feather material to lock it into the threads and make it more resistant to pulling out than if you had been able to cut it off completely flush. Now it comes time to finish this jig off. 
Um, so once you're happy with the coverage of your feathers and the thread wraps, we're going to throw on a couple of what we call whip finishes. This isn't the easiest move to learn, but once you figure it out, it kind of becomes muscle memory. But honestly, that's also why it's hard for people to teach it. They don't really think about it while they do it. They just do it. Um, so here's my attempt at teaching it. It's really important through this process, though, to keep tension on your thread. I can't stress that enough. Tension through this is important. So start by letting out some extra thread length from your bobbin and then you're going to put your fingers in kind of a wide peace sign against the thread sideways here with your index finger pointing down. Bring your thread back up and over the back side of your fingers and then turn your hand to make a little triangle of thread and then you're just going to want to bring that towards the side of your jig that's closest to you. Now, you're going to hold your bobbin near the jig and then begin to wrap the threads around the throat of that jig while keeping one end of the thread out in front of that jig head. Now, your wrist wasn't built for this motion, so you'll kind of have to pivot your hand, which causes your fingers to basically switch roles as you make these revolutions. And yes, my hands aren't in the shot throughout this whole process. I guess I just need a third hand to adjust the cameras while I do this. But um, after you've done that four times, grab something that you can use to keep tension on the thread that will basically act as a pulley. I'm using my scissors here, but if you've got a tying kit, there's something called a bodkin that's useful for this. It looks like a long needle with a small handle. But whatever you're using, slide it into the loop and then start pulling the bobbin away from your jig head without letting more thread off the spool. Move your scissors or whatever closer to the jig head, then slide them out while you pull that all taut with your bobbin hand. So once you've got that finished up, pulled it tight, repeat that process a second time and then cut your thread loose. Don't pull against your thread as you cut. It ends up shocking some of those fibers and can cause it to uh, back out of the, the whip finish you just made. Now, normally I just use some Clear Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails or UV resin to coat these threads, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to coat the thread wraps with the same nail polish that we used to paint the head. All you're doing is protecting those wraps to keep things from unraveling, but in this instance, it's also keeping those colors similar to what you painted the jig head with. So I uh, use less paint on this step, but go slowly so that it has some time to sort of seep into the threads and lock that down. And that's pretty much it. Like most new techniques and things, this will be awkward at first, but You've got extra jig heads in that pack to continue trying and refining your take technique. Uh, then take them out, fish them, decide if that extra fulfillment you get from catching fish on something you made is worth giving this more attention. So, uh, Comment below if you're going to give this a try or if you have questions. And do me a solid, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, click the little bell icon so that you don't miss our videos. Hope this all helps. Thank you for tuning in. That's it for this week. We'll see you on the next one.